Good morning everyone. So today we're going to be looking at making corals as a collaborative artwork with, where everyone makes a couple of corals of their own and then we put them together to create our own reef. You've got resources on your tables as a starting point. So we're not looking to necessarily recreate them exactly, but we are looking at them as a starting point to create something out of clay that when people look at it, they immediately think of coral, but we're also looking for some of your own imagination. If you were the creator, and we are made in God's image, and as such, we have the ability to create, but if you were the creator, what sort of corals could you make? So somewhere between reality and imagination, we're going to build our own coral reef. Everyone, each table has got some resources. There's a wooden board for everyone. The wooden boards must be um, the rough side up because the clay doesn't stick to the rough side. If you use the other side, your clay pieces will stick and when you try and get them off they'll probably be ruined and each table has a selection of tools. These tools are really all about making textures because if you look at the corals they're full of texture and pattern and we're going to try and recreate those. Some of your textures might be, might come from actually pressing things into the clay to make repeated patterns which you know this is a screw and obviously coral isn't made of screws but what happens if we start overlaying those patterns we get quite a nice texture so you might get textures like that or you know if you roll a screw along in lots of different directions you can create different textures or your textures might come from joining bits of clay onto other bits of clay. So you might roll out some really thin little sausages and then using the joining method, which is scratching and putting slip on. So slip is also known as well, I always think of it as mud, so it's a wet version of this clay. And it's the glue that we use when we're joining bits of clay. So you might want to join bits of clay to make textures. So you might scratch and slip and then you want to make, always think of that brain coral. You might want to start making some sort of brain type textures on there but more of that as we go along so I'll just take that off for now you've each got a little bit of clay you don't need a lot the size of the things that we need are sorry the size of the things we need are sort of this size because then when we clump them together we start getting interesting um, reefs building up so not, nothing too huge but there will be some of these in the classroom for you to have a look at so the first thing when you're building a coral if i was making a coral based on this so not exactly like that what i'm noticing as there's these long tall bits and they sort of clumped together some they're not all the same length they're different lengths so if I was making those, my first thing to do would be to make a couple of coils or sausages or snakes, depends what you used to call them in junior school or when you were little, when you were playing with Play-Doh or Plasticine. So I'm going to start making different ones or different lengths of those and at the moment I'm just leaving them all pretty um, straight but later on I might want to bend them or make them look as if they've been moving in the water but for now I'm just making a couple of those and I notice here on this one 
that there's a little hole in the top. Obviously, I can't see the tops of those, but you know, these are living organisms. So that hole is obviously something inside or that's how it filters its food. So when I come to make them, and interestingly, these are sort of a little bit thinner at the bottom. So once I've made them, I might thin them out. And then how do I join them together? Well, I'm going to clump them. So I could just pinch the ends together to join them, or I could make a little base that they sit on. I think in this instance, I might make a base, which I might trim later. Now, if you remember, joining clay always. If you don't join your clay with scratch and slip, it'll stick together while it's wet, but when it dries, it'll fall apart. So you want to scratch the surfaces that you're going to join. This is a serrated kidney. There should be enough of those for everyone. I'm also scratching the sides of these because they're going to stick together at the bottom. So I'm scratching the sides and I'm scratching the tops or the bottoms as it is. So all of these bits that I'm scratching are going to be joined. But before I join them, I'm going to start trying to get a little bit of texture on there. So I've got to now think, how am I going to make that texture? It's got raised ridges and indented parts. So, you know, I might experiment on a little bit of, uh, another little bit of my clay and I might go, you know, is that a texture? I don't think so. It's too sort of uniform. I quite like the idea of this one rolled over and over. That gives me quite a nice texture. Um, you know, or I could, you know, use my fingers and pinch, pinch it in different ways. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for this texture and it's all about experimentation and I'm going to start rolling this texture on my um, forms that I've made. So I've made my basic form and I'm going to start rolling some texture remembering that I'm not going to get all upset if it's not exactly the right texture because this is that sort of coral between imagination and reality. So it has to be based on reality, but it doesn't have to have the final look of reality. So then that looks quite good. Then because I know they've all got a hole in, I'm going to make a hole in the top there. And obviously I'll go along and do that to all of them because they have all got the same texture. Or a similar texture. And then once I've done those, I'm going to go and join them all up. I'm going to join them now, just because. So still, oh. putting slip on all the scratch surfaces and not masses, just enough so that you can still see the texture. So I'm putting slip on, but you can still see the scratched texture underneath. That's important. If you put too much, they'll just slip and slide about. And then it's a matter of joining them with some gentle pressure. And I'm not gonna be worried too much initially about what they look like together because once they joined, then I can start playing with how they're formed. So, Obviously, I've only got texture on two of them, and I think four's not a good number. I'd maybe add some more. But once I'm finished, 
and where I've joined them I can go back and put more texture on them and that's how you're going to build up your corals you're going to just keep adding to them until you're happy with them once you've made one then try and make something that's completely different and have some fun while you're doing it Okay, I've added a few more bits to this coral and I wanted to just show you these tools. Sometimes when you're trying to join them, your fingers are just a little bit big and clumsy. So you can use these tools to actually just come in there and join those bits of clay because you need to sort of press them down and blend them together. Once you've done that, you might want to come back in with your texture and create more of a texture and then really important is if you can take the back of one of the paintbrushes on your table and I've given you all paintbrushes about this size and just gently twist that to get a hole in the middle okay because from that Hole, then we can either put them on little spikes or things like this where we can actually mount them and make our wreath. If we don't want to mount them, they'll also just sit there quite nicely. I think with these ones, what I should do is actually have them all going off in much the same direction. So I think that's an okay representation of what we've done. And then I can, if I want, instead of having a completely round bottom, I might just make that a little bit more of an interesting rocky shape. What I want you to do when you're building your coral, I want, I want you to do one where you actually press textures in, whether that's with a skewer and you make holes and things, or you use the end of a skewer to create lines, whatever you do. So one way you do that, and I want you to do another one where you might make a basic shape. So in this instance, I'm going to make not a pinch pot, but just a little rounded sort of bowl shape. That's a little bit hollow inside. As you're making them, think what you're trying to do, okay? And then I might use this kid rubber kidney tool just to smooth it up a little bit. Actually, I don't know why I did that because I'm going to scratch it. So I'm going to make that and leave it there. It's one of those corals that sort of forms mounds when it's collected together. I'm just not sure if I've got a picture of one. Not here. But then I'm going to make lots and lots of tiny little things that I can add on as a texture. So you do need patience for this. Okay. I'm going to make lots of little balls. Obviously I'm not going to make you sit and watch me make all of them. I'm going to try and make them roughly the same size with little pinches of clay rolling them together and rolling them in my hands. I'll just make a few more so that you get the idea of what I'm going to do. Now because they're so little I don't need to scratch these but I will need to scratch the surface that I'm joining them to. That one's way too big. So don't get impatient. You've got your double to make your three corals. I'm hoping you'll be able to all make three or at least use up the clay that you've got there. You saw that I didn't have a huge ball of clay but you can make quite a lot with it. So once I've made all my little balls of clay I'm going to scratch the surface because I'm going to cover the surface with a texture that I've made by sticking things on. So with this one, you're pressing the texture into the clay and on this one, you are adding a texture. 
So again, putting some slip on so that I can still see the texture through. I'm not hiding that texture by having so much clay. And then with my balls, I'm just going to start pressing them on. Obviously, as I press them on, depending on how hard I press them, these are now making little discs, which I quite like. If I wanted to keep them as balls, I would just not press as hard when I join them on. Okay, so there you can see if I press them, they're more disc-like, and if I don't, they're more balls. And the slip is going to stick them on, but I am going to press these. That's not the end. Once I've covered my um, clay sort of sphere in those, then I'm going to come with the back of a skewer, and there's skewers on your desk, and I'm going to make a little indentation in each of those. Now and then I might go further, then I might go, well, actually, I'm going to put tiny with the point of this. I'm going to go and put smaller dots all around the edge. So when we do painting, we always talk of layering and your building with clay has layers of detail as well. And that's what I'm really wanting to see. I want to see textural detail that's built up by doing different things to the clay as you make it. So I don't know if that's too close, whether you can see it or not, or if it's blurry, but there'll be examples out and you can have a look at them. So ideally what I'd like you to do is to use all the clay that you've got. I'm going to show you one other thing which I love doing with the clay. Um, and we don't often do it, is, is make the clay really thin. So you might put it down and then really sort of rub it out, press it right out so that you get this really thin, almost leaf-like clay. And there are quite a lot of corals like that, but make it really thin on the edges but you can see the base is still quite fat because then if I join these to a base, you know, then I can get these wonderful little filigree wavy things, things that look like they could wave in the water. Um, another way, if you want to use that really thin clay, <coughs> make the balls and then same thing, just squish them between your fingers till they're really thin. And on its own, that's not very interesting. But if you then do lots of those of different sizes and different orientations, really thin, and you're scratching and slipping them and joining them together, then you start to create these very layered quite delicate looking things just by pinching and squeezing your clay. The secret is to make sure that you scratch and slip between each one and then you gradually build up these sorts of layered corals which you can then play with how you arrange the edges or put them together like that so don't think you know it all has to be oops that one's collapsed all has to be made of sausage try and really be as creative as you can use the clay in as many different ways as you can and create some beautiful interesting corals which when we group them together will make an excellent reef have fun doing that <laughs>